stocks do continue to ride this green wave, if you will, after Janet Yellen uh, signaled a slower pace of rate hikes. Scott Martin, United Advisors Chief Market Strategist. Scott, uh, you know, we closed at the high yesterday, but it wasn't, we weren't up two or 300 points. We were up 97 points, and we had a good rally this morning out the gate, but we're starting to fade here. Does the Fed even have the kind of credibility or firepower anymore to really propel a sustained rally? Um, no, and I think that's why you're seeing the market do what it's doing. I mean, didn't yesterday kind of Charles feel a little cheap? You know, it felt really easy, and that's typically the fake out before something bad happens. I mean, it's interesting, though. I mean, seeing what the Fed's talking about these days and how they've kind of totally uh, gone back on everything they talked about in December when I thought they made a mistake hiking rates uh, a quarter point, they're kind of back in this, like, uh, Jack Burns from Meet the Parents, like, circle of trust, aren't they? Where now the markets are like, hey, the PBOC, uh, the, the, the European Central Bank, the Bank of Japan, the Fed has it all under control, everybody. So, hey, stocks can rally, bonds can rally, everything's going to be okay. You know, it's interesting because you, you know, they did point out yelling yesterday. She specifically talked about global risk. But I think here at home, there's uh, yeah, listen, the economy is not doing that great. Considering they printed $3 trillion, it hasn't done anything for Main Street to maybe it sold some cars. And that is their challenge because they really don't have any more, you know, any more arrows in a quiver. And you're right, this December rate hike, oh, the last three weeks have been all about a mea culpa. They know that was a mistake now. But what, what now, what dictates the market and what are we rooting for, on, for instance, on Friday? Do we want a strong jobs number or do we, do we want more mediocrity? That's an awesome question. I think you almost want mediocrity now. It seems like the market wants to, to say, hey, uh, here's a bad jobs number, uh, Fed. Come in and help us. And, and you're right, Charles. I mean, you know, it's baseball season near, nearby here, so it's almost like this performance-enhancing stimulus or performance-enhancing drugs that the Fed is providing both here in the U.S. and worldwide is what's driving markets, not the economy. And that's really what's scary because eventually that will come home to roost. We got a preview of that uh, late in August, early September last year. We got another preview of it in January and early February this year. It's going to happen again. There's going to be another drop. What do investors do? Let's say a long-term investor, Scott. You just kind of ride it out, understanding that the market is cyclical, and from time to time it goes down. Yeah, I agree with that, and, and I don't uh, provide any uh, insight as to saying, hey, you should jump in and jump out, because I don't like that strategy. But I do think massaging around the edges, meaning right now, if you're a balanced investor and you want to have that stock bond allocation, I'd ratchet up the bond side. I'd ratchet up the gold side because that's the kind of stuff that's going to protect you when the market goes down. So, but those are more hedges. That wouldn't be a central position. In other words, uh, I think yesterday, for instance, uh, General Mills hit an all-time high. I mean, that's like the least sexiest stock out there. But if somebody's had that in their 401k for the last 20 years, they're not doing too bad. Yeah, and there's other ones, too. I mean, GM's, G, uh, G, uh, General Mills is boring, but there's other ones like Microsoft that are doing well. Facebook is hanging in there. Apple, not so much. So you can't always pick the best stocks, but having that balanced portfolio along with the bonds and gold in there will help you sleep a little better at night. You know, I know you're not one of these uh, guys. One of the reasons that you're one of our favorites is you're very balanced, uh, but we do have the, the ultra hawks. And every year they come out and say, this is the year of the big crash. And then, of course, you know, a year goes by. But is this a year, you sound like you're pretty convinced that this is a year we probably will be more challenged as investors than we have been in a long time. Yeah, we're due for a down year. I mean, I saw your interview with Mark Faber, uh, for crying out loud, before Easter, and that guy's even getting bullish. I mean, that tells you something, uh, that the world might be upside down. I'll tell you, I'll give you this little right. nugget here, and, and kind of pun intended. I think gold could be the best performing asset class this year, because there is a crazy amount of stimulus out there. Interest rates are negative, so I'd look there as a possible safe haven. All right, gold or GLD or the physical stuff. I'm in it with you, buddy. Thanks a lot. See you soon.